How many of you remember when we talked about solar geoengineering? Do you remember that? I did a whole episode talking about how Bill Gates wanted to block out the sun like like you know Mr. Burns or something. I'm not even joking. Remember he, they had they actually had a proposal. They're actually developing it. They wanted to fly jets over the into the stratosphere and release chemical trails that would create a barrier between the Earth and the Sun and imitate or mimic the effect of a, of a uh, volcanic explosion. Do you remember that? Folks, a company now is going to do not that, but something very similar. A company is going to be releasing sulfur into the air in order to make sure the sun isn't, isn't as hot or something. Epic Times has this. Geoengineering startup begins releasing sulfur particles into the atmosphere in an attempt to stop climate change. Here we go. And remember, they call it solar geoengineering. That's, that's the technical term for the solar geoengineering. It says this. A startup is launching weather balloons capable of releasing reflective sulfur particles into the Earth's atmosphere with the stated aim of combating climate change through solar geoengineering while disregarding the negative consequences of such actions. Now it says, in solar geoengineering, attempts are made to manipulate the climate by reflecting more sunlight away from Earth theoretically releasing sulfur and other such compounds is believed to potentially cool down the planet. Yeah, it's probably also going to remove the greenhouse gas effect and probably kill the plants while they're at it. Like as you know, we've seen happen with, for example, massive volcanic eruptions, which we can look at historically and know exactly the incredible damage and plague that they caused. Theoretically, releasing sulfur and other such compounds is believed to potentially cool down the planet. Back in 1991, for example, when Mount Pinatubo in the Philippines erupted, it released large amounts of sulfur dioxide into the stratosphere that spread around the world and triggered a 1 degree Fahrenheit cooling Wow! over the next 15 months. The California-based startup Make Sunsets is believed... <laughs> just eliminate the sun, is believed to have launched the weather balloons from Mexico. In an interview with MIT Technology Review, Make Sunsets CEO Luke Eisman said that he suspects he expects to be characterized as a Bond villain for what the company is doing. Probably. I don't think Bond villains are that dumb, though. Just my belief, right? But he insists that climate change is a threat. And since the world is moving slowly to address the problem, a more radical solution is needed. He said, quote, It's morally wrong, in my opinion, for us to not be doing this. What's important, he said, is to, quote, do this as quickly and safely as we can. It says, Make Sunsets is attempting to make revenue out of its efforts, seeking to sell $10 cooling credits for releasing a gram of particles into the atmosphere. The startup raised $750,000 in funding. It plans on raising the sulfur payload in the future, as well as using telemetry devices and other sensors. Now, one important thing with this, this is not, this is just based on what I understand from researching the last story in solar geoengineering, it, it, this will not be as permanent as what Bill Gates was looking to do. Remember that Bill Gates wanted to release uh, particles into the stratosphere. Um, the, re the reasoning for releasing into the stratosphere rather than the atmosphere, right, is that if you release them at lower altitudes, it doesn't actually stick. It doesn't have a lasting effect. <clears throat> you know, it doesn't, doesn't last that long. Whereas if you do it in the stratosphere, you're looking at like several years and so on. Uh, what they're doing, in my opinion, is just frankly political or environmental showmanship and they're trying to basically make noise around the idea of solar geoengineering probably trying to raise awareness of it or just trying to make money off it but regardless of that remember we talked about previously that one of the arguments with solar geoengineering right now is that they need regulation they need to regulate it uh, because, because of, frankly, people like this who can just put some balloons up in the air and try to, like, block out the sun haphazardly based on people donating $10 for cooling credits for a gram of particles, right? 
Like, let me get a gram of uh, of sulfur you can spurt into the atmosphere. You know, ten dollars, right? That that's the way they're doing it. The concern I have with things like this is that individuals doing it haphazardly like this, just doing it based on whatever money they can raise, they're not going to have a lasting impact. Maybe in the local area, maybe I don't know. We'll see what happens to the crops or whatever in the local area. But aside from that, they're not going to have a lasting. You know, I'd say a human rights abuse against Mexicans because it's doing this from Mexico, but it's not going to have a lasting impact. The impact of this is they're going to raise awareness of it, and you're going to have organizations looking at this based on public, you know, public anger or whatever, or if they do cause damage, and there's going to be international organizations say, hey, we can't let that happen again, or hey, maybe this is a good idea. Let's figure out how we can implement it on a broader scale. It's going to be one of those two. And they're going to say, we need a governing body to oversee this. The problem we have with governing bodies is as soon as you create a governing body, they then become part of the administrative state, at least in the United States. And once they become part of the administrative state, you create an agency or whatever else, they can, be then, they can then begin creating different uh, policies or dif different, different rules, essentially. Rules that can bypass Congress, that don't have to go through the legislative process. And this, you know, rules they create, these policies they create, can then basically become laws outside of normal laws. You know, the, they call it the administrative state. My concern as well, you might have seen that the Biden administration has rolled out a new registry for private farms. If you are private gardens, not even farms. So if you have like your, your window farm, if you're growing tomatoes in your backyard, the Biden administration wants you to register it. The problem you have with that, in my opinion, is not so much that you're planning on doing anything nefarious in the short term with it. The problem with that is if you have a government branch that's running that type of registry, that's overseeing that type of registry through the administrative state where agencies can basically create any laws they want and bypass a legislative process, they become essentially many government agencies that can make rules that do impact the laws, at least in terms of what they can charge you with, that, that dictate these types of things. I know upstate New York, ironically, while they're culling chickens at some of the major producers and is the cost of eggs is, what, 50 cents an egg now in some areas in the U.S., right? They're actually banning chickens in upstate New York. Uh, they're doing things like this already. And... Again, that's part of the administrative state. It's not coming down from the top. It's coming down from these little agencies that can dictate things based on policy or based on just administration, right?